Zoom app, I think that would work better. Oh, okay. Probably for next week. Okay. It, it's on the tablet. Yeah. I just need to access it through the Zoom app. Okay. to do one second. I need to mute me.
Good morning and broadcast. Yeah, one more time. Good morning and broadcasting live from Manor Road. Today you'll notice that Tom and Alice are not here. Fortunately, they tested positive yesterday. So they're broadcasting from home. And uh, here we go. As we begin to acknowledge the territory. As we gather for worship, we honor and thank the Huron Wendat Nation, the Metis Nation of Ontario, the Mississaugas of New Credit First Nation, the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, and Six Nations of the Grand River as our community partners, our traditional inhabitants of the lands of the City of Toronto, the region of Hamilton, Durham region and surrounding areas. May we be connected to the heartbeat of the Spirit as one. following the service and I believe there's been scrumptious delights arriving as we speak we'll probably have more food than we have people but that's good <laughs> it's wonderful wonderful it's what we're going to be doing as we transition from service to annual meeting we'll allow people to pause to get some coffee and stretch break and whatnot and, and just move things around a wee bit and as you see the photo in the announcements isn't it wonderful Everything is flowering, not just cherry blossoms and all sorts of good things. And trees are growing and doing wonderful all around. And we're celebrating the, the beginning of something truly remarkable. Now, Betty Kalman didn't have anything to update about congregational care, but do remember Norma Grinovicious in hospital. And uh, let's keep sliding along. And we have actually, Allison, we're gonna hear from you for a Yeah, and I'll mute me. Good morning, everybody. Well, here we are in our house because Tom and I and Ellen all have COVID. So far, Beatrice is clear. <laughs> but anyways, I tested positive last night, so I will not be doing Little Rainbow Fish in person on Wednesday. Hopefully, I'll be back on Friday. But on Wednesday, I'll be doing a FaceTime or Facebook Live uh little rainbow fish circle time from home um and that's about it wednesday the youth are gathering from six until seven um so john joseph i guess you will be leading that oh you're on mute Anyways, I think that's probably it for me. I will update everybody as soon as um, I know how we're all doing over here and John Joseph can take over from here. Uh, just to remind everybody, it will be seven. I haven't cloned myself yet. So there is a, a MRUC exec meeting at six o'clock, which I have to be there for to make it legal. Right, So that's there we go. And, and then we have youth matter at seven. Let's keep sliding along. And then we have Bible study and yoga. And this uh, Friday, we have a good friend, Joanne Stevenson, speaking about the Trinity Bell La Park Labyrinth and planting in the spring. Now, how many people put your hands up have been on the west side of the Eden Center near Holy Trinity Church? How many people know there's a labyrinth there? Oh, a few. You're, put your hand up if you didn't know there was a labyrinth. You'd be surprised how many people don't know. And when they walk by, they say, where is it? It's actually 70 feet in diameter. And it's a treasure of, of the city of Toronto because it reminds you of a square in Europe because you are surrounded by busy, busy city and then a 150 year old church and this beautiful open space with a double, triple width of a row of trees. In the center is the stone labyrinth and the path is about a meter wide. So highly recommend that. If you're looking for a place of calm in the busyness of the city, the Trinity Bell Labyrinth. 
Yes. And next week we have continue with Sunday at the Manor. And then beyond we have a quiet center with Teze. And we have our outdoor, like last year, Pride Parade, where we got to circumnavigate the neighborhood. It was a lot of fun. And uh, to remember, we have lots of COVID tests and masks. So if you need any more masks, just speak to Marianne and she'll fit you up. Yes. And keep going. And there we go. And helping Ukraine. So our wonderful Ann Piper, who's a gifted knitter at Miss Many, as these are actually in the office. And we're going to suggest best price size three, size five, and size 10. Now, apparently, this, the largest one of the child size fits Mei Chong to give you an idea of the size of that. Because I don't know about you, I find sizing is all over the map. I'll go to buy a men's shirt, and sometimes they'll say large, and it's made for another culture. It's not that there, there's no way, I, I think I would rip it if I put it on. Or sometimes large is so large, it's made for yet an, a linebacker in the NFL. I mean, uh, so. Again, you have to try things on, the best way to figure it out. Yes, definitely. And let's keep sliding along. And barn raising. You may say, what in the world is that? That was Stone Soup, who we heard at the IFTAR dinner. This is, uh, if you want to hear some of the music from Come From Away, they're going to pre record it. But she's apparently good friends with all those people. So this is a new network that's developing in Toronto. Several places are already part of this. And it, what's essentially, imagine if we had one here. It would be Manor Road partnering with all the businesses to get the businesses to agree to have vouchers for people of need. So free haircuts, free groceries, free this, free that. And it, it, what it is, is helping people discover again and regain the dignity of being people who are part of our community. Yeah, that just, and that's a bit of a launch for that. Yeah. Okay. And then Minute for Mission or anti raises and Matters. We continue at, not only in our local church, but abroad. In our United Church, uh, you may or may not have heard, there was a very untoward something said on the General Council, uh, one of the webinars. And so they're working to bring healing to that. We have to remember as much as we think we've arrived, we've never arrived. I mean, there's always people at every corner and every turn and every shape to be aware of and discover again. And it, it's a great gift. It's, a, it's wonderful. I can share this now. The new uh, president of Shining Waters, is a good friend of will be a, a good friend of mine, Tina Kyle Conlon, and she's a she's actually the uh, ED of the Davenport Community Ministry. Why I say this is because Phil, uh, Tina is Filipino, and it's wonderful to have someone from a different culture be the who, the person who will be our version of a bishop. We don't have bishops, but our version of a bishop for about a couple of years in our denomination. And that she she was my student. I got to supervise her for a year as her uh, super, as she did an internship. And we co-presided at a wedding on Friday. She's not legal yet, and I am. So I stood there and smiled and signed the documents. Let's continue on. And we begin with our call to worship. Hallelujah. Christ is alive. Let all the people praise him. Let all creation sing his joy. Hallelujah. And remember. <laughs> Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell our hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Hear the love of Christ shall. Please be seated. And what's your dog's name, Andrea? Kanka. There we have Solomon inside Kanka. There's good they're separated. It's much better that way. <laughs> Solomon's a Napoleon dog. Little dog, big ideas. God be with you. Surprising God and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you make all things new. Long ago, we called your church to the love of the old house. 
also shall depart to all the princes. And gave them the gift of your Holy Spirit to work in their hearts to an access love. Give us the same spirit of openness that we too might discern new directions in our day for your dream to reconcile and heal all creation. Amen. Now we have, uh, do, do we turn off the PowerPoint for a second? We have Ainsley online and me in person. I thought it's good to keep that connection. So the online people have their fire. We have a fire here too. This is good. Let there be light. Let there be light. Thank you, Ainsley. And may the angels of light glisten for us this day. And may the sparks of God's beauty dance in the eyes of those we love. May the universe be on fire with presence for us this day. May the new suns rise and raise us with gratitude. That earth's green is shine and its waters free with the spirit. That heaven's winds stir the soil of our soul, and fresh awakenings rise within us. Amen. And God of mercy, your command to love one another across all differences opens us to new horizons. Yet we often respond with fear and judgment that hinders your goal for humanity. Forgive us our sins, we pray. And give us a true repentance that leads to life for all creation. God's promises are trustworthy and true. Our sins are forgiven. Be at peace to serve the Lord. And may you always be known by God. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. May we share the peace of Christ. Peace, everyone. Peace. John Joseph, you're muted. There you go. Good. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes. Speak again. This is me. Yeah, we're just getting the house sound. We don't get the mic. Well, that, that's because I'm not trying to do it. Allison, there. Allison, are you on mute? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Oh, Hi. Okay. Fabulous. I'm just going to highlight you. Okay, here we go. I'm going to add to that. I'll let it be. Wow. That looks really scary. The question would be, Allison, did you ever do that? Um, no, never, never, ever, ever. How about you, John Joseph? It's actually on my bucket list. <laughs> I, I would try that once, and uh, 
And then when I was out there, I was like, what was I thinking? Oh my <laughs> gosh, yes. There have been moments where uh, when I was hanging over Victoria Falls <gasps> with a propeller boat, I was 300 feet in the air, I kept wondering, this sounded like a good idea. <laughs> As I was bouncing down the water. So remind us that sometimes we try these things, sometimes we watch people try these things, right? Yes. <laughs> I will watch. <laughs> oh, she's good. Okay. So as we watch people do these things, well, one thing that we call like Phoenix, Charlie Brown. Do you read that, Allison? Yes. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. So this is a reminder that all those who carry umbrellas, remember to share, how many people carry umbrellas? <laughs> remember to share your umbrella at least on very Okay. And Allison, do you have a prayer for us today? I do, yeah. I just have a, I was actually, after reading this this week, um, I was thinking about kindness and what does kindness mean and the dictionary definition was of a sympathetic or helpful nature. And in our readings this week, um, <clears throat> it says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. And I really feel like that is Jesus telling us to be kind. And one of my favorite, favorite prayer books for children, it's prayers for children, and they have uh, this prayer, um, which I think encapsulates kindness and, 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 and a direct connection between our faith and kindness. So it says, Christ, let me see you in others. Christ, let others see you in me. Christ, let me see you are the caller, you are the poor, you are the stranger at my door. You are the wanderer, the unfed. You are the homeless with no bed. You are the man driven insane. You are the child crying in pain. You are the one who comes to me. Open my eyes that I may see. And there we go. Thank you, Alison. That was good. Say the amen to that. Amen. God has promised, your word made flesh in Jesus Christ, his trustworthy and true. By the power of your Holy Spirit, may rise up in us and stay by the gift of the spring of water of life to refresh our church with the Lord. Now we get to hear the great in the talk. Mute, but leave you off camera. Today's first reading is from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 to 18. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why do you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment three men, sent to me from Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them, and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, 
Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Thank you, Melana. And when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer, and you will look for me. And they said to the Jews, the people, so now I say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Hear the wisdom told to us through the ages. this time of year here at Manor Road we, we watch the whole 
and it actually was getting shallow, we said, that's good news. That's good news. Let us pray. God, help us notice not only the holes that are being dug, but all the wonder that's all around us and the great abundance of green and the people that are planting and the people playing on skateboards and riding bicycles. May we look to you and discover you speaking through the wonder of birds and trees coming alive again. Amen. There's something about the scriptures today that speak to perhaps sometimes when we're having discussions and deliberations and the words, get up to meet Peter. And I thought that's so true. That Peter is that person, meaning rock, if you think of it is, as the person who is perhaps us in a different form or shape. He's the one who wants to jump in to the deep end or run away. Peter who wants to build tabernacles. Peter who forgets how to fish, even though somehow he's been doing it all these years. Peter who is there in the good, the bad, and the indifference. If we see our own lives through seven prisms, you know, the prisms that take light and split it, all the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, you know, something so wonderful. But if we hear the words, I was in the city, and we think of the cities then, the cities now. And we were talking earlier this morning how here at Young and Eglinton, it doesn't look like Young and Eglinton anymore. It looks a bit like, well, Manhattan and, and 54th or perhaps King and Bay when you look at the, the, the massive blocks that are emerging and, uh, and you say, where is the green space? Right next door, actually, isn't that good? Yes, but there's something about life in the city when Peter says, I was in the city what it was about then. And I heard a friend of mine sent me this reference to this. He said, we need to reclaim our lives from our phone reset. Amen to that. And I share that frustration. How many times am I worried about how much power is on my phone? You don't worry about signal strength so much anymore. Or is my phone updated? It's as if it's a we're, we're attached to it. And you know that scene in Ben-Hur when he's a galley slave? We are now living that reality, are we not? I am. I'm a galley slave to my phone. Rowing speed. Do I have Bell? Do I have Rogers? I used to be a Blackberry person. And I was sad when we could no longer do that anymore. But here we are. But it's about reclaiming our lives and learning to shut the phone off. I was at Mervish on Thursday and I shut my phone off. I was so glad when the other person four rows over, her phone rang in the middle of the show. And I said, thank you, God, that was not me. We do need to shut our phones off and unplug. And we need, yes, we do need to do that and perhaps forget where it is. I know when I'm with people, you don't see me looking at my phone right now. I'm not doing that, but it's about being connected and listening again, learning again. As we hear that voice that they heard in the scripture, we hear that voice that's so loud and so profound, touching us in the here and the now. That gift of God breaking in, knowing that there's a whisper and a journey opening us in, in this moment of time, as if I saw the holy city and I heard the words, love is the deepest part of our identity. What a gift that is. Yes, it is, is it not? The deepest part of our identity, the moment of empathy and discovery. And as Christ says, you will look for me, though you may not be able to find me. And you may not know where I am right now. You will look for me. And I wish, as I'm looking out there, little children, I'm going to a place you cannot go with me in the here and now. But yet I'm with you in the moments where you take sabbatical and leisure and discovery, where we, as was read this morning, we see the home of God, where we embrace love. And love can be so hard, can it not? When we love the unlovable. I was having coffee the other day with a person I had known in, in another context and, and they were phoning the church. And they were phoning the church. And they were phoning the church. And I, I'm quite honest, I was, I was avoiding trying to talk further. I talked once, I thought that was good. And you know the people that are hard to talk to? And so I did anyways, I thought I will, I will. They, were, they had a new business pitch. And I didn't want to be part of their business pitch, but I listened. We got gathered for coffee on Market Street. And I think sometimes that's what we're called to do. Just be present once. That's sometimes all people need. They sound like they have a good plan. But to be present with the challenging ones, that's, are we called to do that? Yes, we are, but it's not easy, is it? The people who have all the answers, or so they think, and we listen. 
and we are present too. But we get up to meet Peter in the moments of our lives. And we find Peter in the city, then and now. We find that message speaking to us in the here and now. We find that we're looking for something. In the words, I give you a new commandment to be nurturing, to be mothering, to be caring. I was in the city, Peter says, and we're looking all around, we're asking the question, climate violence is happening. We're, at, we're hearing stories, and I was listening to the CBC about water levels rising. We heard from Bees for Peace on Friday here, and I learned, oh, we, you know, so often we forget, these are not just honeybees. And actually, the bees we're talking about are the wild bees that nurture and pollinate things. To be aware of that. When gas becomes $2.08, I drove up to the pumps. I almost had cardiac arrest this morning. I said, that's a bank loan. That's a down payment. I think that hybrid car is looking pretty good. <laughs> but somehow, in the here and now, we need to figure that out and figure out how we can plug in. 32 years ago, I moved to Northern Ontario. And plugging in is normal but not for your electric car. You had to plug your, your engine in to heat it at night or your car wasn't starting when it's minus 70 for four months of the year. They do this in Calgary, they do this in Winnipeg. Why can't we do that here? They have the infrastructure. So somehow we perceive the infrastructure is harder to figure out for us. But perhaps that's because we want to charge for it. I'm sure we could figure that out too, but it's to find our way forward, to get up, Peter, be with Peter to see the embrace and be the arms of living community in the here and now. But we think of how the, the hills and valleys of pandemic and where we come from and where we're going, and here we're gonna have the annual meeting. Last year was online, this year it's hybrid. I think we're making progress. Yes. But there's something we do know. We do like to be present with each other. We do like to take the time to listen and learn again from each other and discover who are you? What is going on in your life? Or what is going on in my life? In the here and the now. We hear the words, the spirit told me to go with you to be love in this time of pandemic. Discover the gift of God. Or when it says, give a new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. One of the commentaries said they had a problem with the word commandment. I don't have a problem with the word commandment. Sometimes we need to be told what to do. Stop at the stop sign, pretty clear, put a seatbelt on. My father, the police officer, he had a problem with seatbelt. You know why? Because he remembers when it wasn't a law. I think seatbelts are a good idea. Mm, I think we figured that out. Projectile in through the windshield is not a good plan, but somehow some people push back when we have word command. When we tell a child, you need to shut the door. Don't put your finger in the light socket. It's not a good idea. Look both ways when you cross the street. We've been telling children that for years. I think adults have forgotten that rule. When you see the jaywalking, the headphones are good in the front. Yeah, I'm having a good time. Oh, there's a car. You have to watch out for me. Where is that coming from? We learn look both ways, but somehow we're forgetting it. In the here and the now. We get up to meet Peter the rock, and we find Peter full of fear, and I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged and ready to risk again. We get up and hear the walk in the city, the voice that's speaking to us. I saw the holy city. And the new Jerusalem is about the here and now, isn't it? It's about the place where we discover God again, and we know that we're not alone. We give a new commandment when we say the words, what's wrong with the world? Well, perhaps it's us needing to find maybe more wrong with the world. How can we be the bridge in the here and the now? As we get up to meet Peter in the city, as we get up to meet Peter in the voices that we hear, as we get up to meet Peter in the holy moments, as we get up to meet Peter where we look, as we get up to meet Peter in the commandments to love each other, and we ask ourselves, what are these times? What is in the city? I was hearing on the CBC, I love CBC. I will share with you every morning if you want CBC ideas. One is the left brain takeover. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. 
Guess when it happened? In the Industrial Revolution. How scary that is over 200, 300 years ago. What that means is that when we decided that manipulating the world was better than relating to it, and when we think of climate crisis, that's part of the problem, isn't it? When we stopped caring about everyone around us and thought, let's create these machines and let's use coal and we'll pollute the air, but we're, we're, we're trying to reclaim and rewind from that. But the balance of left brain and right brain, we hear that so often. Actually, there was a wonderful part, if, if you listen to the podcast, there was a, a scientist who was actually very left brain. Then she had a stroke and only her right brain was left. And she's, she had a great time. I'm a living proof that the right brain can work in a good way. You think of the artistic side, but we're meant to be both operating together. If we think about having conscience, having moral values, when we make decisions with each other, when we make rules and regulations, it's about being compassionate again and having grace again and being understanding when someone perhaps isn't who we think they should be or how they can be. When we think at the very beginning of the passage, it was very much about kosher eating laws, eating in a different way. I remember growing up, we, we I didn't know, we had Italian food, we had curry in the house, I thought that was normal. I remember going to the hospital and saying, I want pasta, and I was seven. And they served margarine on boiled macaroni. I said, yuck. I grew up with homemade tomato sauce and meatballs. This was not my idea of a good thing. But yet somehow we've grown and discovered over time how eating the foods, we're, we're ready to risk again. And that's about learning and walking in the shoes of other people to get up with Peter, to walk in the city, to know in the here and now we're not alone. It was, I came across this piece of poetry again by William Blake. And you know, it's interesting, when we write, rewrite hymn books, we left this one out. And I'll, if you are, if you are from Britain, you know, this is a soccer song I call it. And did those feet in ancient times walk upon England's mountain green? It was the holy lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen. And did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? And was Jerusalem builded here among the dark satanic mills? Bring me my bow of burning gold. Bring me my arrows of desire. Bring me my spear, O clouds unfold. Bring me chariots of fire. I will not cease from mental fight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. Jerusalem today, we, are the holy city to get up to meet Peter, to be loving God and loving other today. Amen. For the great diversity you have created, Peter, we come to you with both the joys and sorrows of our hearts. We are grateful for the gift of life and the joy that it can bring, for families and friends who love us, for allies who stick up for us, even when we cannot risk sticking up for ourselves. For the great diversity you have created in our world, we pray that those who suffer from discrimination because of their gender identity or sexual orientation or their skin color, who worry about their employment or who cannot find a job, for those who must decide who they are to find housing, for those who are not safe on our streets, for those who do not feel safe in their place of worship. Help us to end homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia, and all forms of discrimination and hate. 
Show us the way, make this world a better place for all. Now today for the offering, we're going to try something mildly old-fashioned, but Don is going to stand, you're not passing the plate, but with the plate. And if you, you feel you've already done something online, well, that's fine, but you can just put your hand up. But uh, I will see if people want to put something on the plate. So God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. And please be seated. Remember to share the light in our time of pandemic. And as we gather our hearts in prayer, remember to lift up all those who are close to us in family and friends, especially Ukraine. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. It is right by you, God. Thanks and thanks. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the ministry of reconciliation to which you call us in the name of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. Accept these gifts for your mission to heal all creation and may they be a testament to your love for us as we share them in love for you. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Our righteousness will go before us and the glory of God will be on your God. Deep in our hearts, there is a common vision. Deep in our hearts, there is a common song. Deep in our hearts, there is a common story telling creation that we are. O oh Lord, in this season of Easter rejoicing, let us offer our prayers and thanksgiving for the church and the world, saying, O oh God of love, raise us to new life in Christ for the well-being of your creation, that we may promote its ability to offer praise to you through spacious skies, beautiful seas and verdant lands and precious creatures, great and small, O oh God of love, Raise us to new life in Christ. For the life of the church, that our generous witness may broaden your table and all find a place to live and grow in love, O God of love. Raise us to new life in Christ. For the welfare of your world, so that all leaders and people, young and old, will strive to live together in harmony while serving the common good, O God of love. Raise us to new life in Christ. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Our righteousness will go before us, and the glory of God will be our God. Deep in our hearts, there is a common vision. Deep in our hearts, there is a common song deep in our hearts there is a common story telling creation that we are one we pray for all who suffer any violence pain or grief that they will know the comfort of your presence as you wipe away every tear from their eyes, O God of love. Raise us to the life of Christ. Christ. 
the love made known to us in Jesus Christ through this community. For this and all other blessings, we give you thanks and praise, O God of love. Praise us to the life of Christ. For all who have died, that you will bring them to the fullness of your joy, where mourning and pain will be no more. O God of love, raise us to new life in Christ. For so many blessings and for answered prayers, we give you thanks to the Jesus Christ in whose name we pray. As a mother nurtures her children, let us pray. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by peoples of the world. Your heavenly, your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your the commonwealth of peace, and freedom, sustains our hope, and comes, comes on earth. With the breath that we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all of us, evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power of his love, now and forever. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. joy we could possibly imagine. May today we be the joy to open the gates to new beginnings. In the name of God, Christ and Spirit. Amen. Sent out in Jesus' name, our hands are ready now to make the world the place in which the kingdom comes. The angels cannot change a world of hurt and pain into a world of love, of justice and of peace. The task is ours to do, to set it really free. Oh, help us to obey and carry out your And please be seated, everyone. Hello, everybody on Zoom. You want to turn your cameras on so we can see you. And see, don't forget that. Just because we're, uh, we're going to have pause briefly, but uh, do wave and say hello. We have obviously Sharon, and we have Marie, and Tom, and Lydia, and we have Carol, and Mike, and we have Liz, and we have mm -hmm. Fina, and Betty here at the cottage, and we have Al. Yes. Oh, can you put on the oh, put on the gallery from the top right? Yeah. There you go. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good. We have Clyde from, from uh, California, Cole's father, and Justin yeah. and Joanne. And there we go. Okay. Great All right. Have a great day, everyone. Yeah, we stop recording, Joanne. <laughs>